Hello everybody and welcome to a video where we are going to be talking all about Minecraft Earth. Minecraft Earth just released in beta to the USA, so I feel like there's going to be a lot of interest around this game now that almost anybody can play it. So this video is really focused on the beginner or someone who just downloaded the game and really needs to know, understand everything uh, about it so you can get started playing. First off, what is Minecraft Earth? Well, it is an AR, that stands for Augmented Reality, focused game. The point of the game is to go out into the real world, sort of similar to Pokemon Go, and you're going to be collecting tappables, and these tappables are basically every item in Minecraft. So you're going to find uh, blocks, you're going to find mobs, you're going to find items like levers and pressure plates. Once you find them, those will all be added into your inventory. You will use those things to build with. You have build plates that are varying sizes depending on which build plates you've unlocked or what level you are. You'll unlock build plates the higher level you get. And those areas are a specific dimensions, maybe eight by eight, 10 by 10. And you can build homes, creations, whatever you want, obstacle courses, it's uh, all up to you and your creativity. You can either build with a build plate or play with a build plate. And both of those modes, you can invite your friends in to play with you. There are some special things when it comes to the fact that you're playing Minecraft Earth instead of just Minecraft. And some of those special things include brand new mobs. So already released has been a few rare mobs that don't appear in any other Minecraft game. We're talking the Muddy Pig, the Moo Bloom, Cluck Shroom, and for the holidays in 2019, the Jolly Llama. Also, there is a sort of wider public game mode, which is adventures, where you have to head into a public area. There will be adventures on the ground, just like a tappable, but when you enter them, you are brought to a brand new experience where you could die, you could get more items, and you can also use items that you have crafted and created to, uh, to, to work your way through that adventure and gather more materials and more things inside of that adventure. I'm gonna cover kind of everything that I've already mentioned a second time in more detail throughout the video. So let's jump into some of the details about Minecraft Earth that will get you completely set up and understand everything about this app. First, let's talk about microtransactions. There is a new currency in Minecraft Earth. These are called rubies. Rubies can be used in the store or in the marketplace. And currently they're mostly used just for build plates. Now, if you don't want to open up your wallet, don't worry. You do get rupees randomly whenever you click on a tappable. So you will get a few rupees. Uh, in fact, me, without this purchasing any, I'm level like seven and I have enough to unlock the first level of build plates in the store. If you don't want to go the slow route, you can purchase rubies for yourself so that you don't have to do all of that work. Next, let's talk about appearance and skins. You can use any of the skins that you have already unlocked in the marketplace on Bedrock Edition. You cannot upload your own skin. You can also use the new character creator, which is a way for you to add layers of things onto your character instead of just one basic skin. Let's go back to gameplay just a bit. So as you are wandering around Minecraft Earth, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff on your map that is on the ground. These are considered tappables. So tappables come in a few different varieties. You have sort of block tappables, tree tappables, mob tappables, chest tappables, and now adventures as well. You can tell if something is an adventure, which is sort of the more advanced sort of thing, by the beacon that is poking out of the top of it. Whenever you click on one of these things, you will be rewarded with your items. Those items correlate to what you just clicked on. So whenever you click on a tree, you're normally getting some type of wood item back. Whenever you click on stone, you're getting some type of stone item back. And whenever you click on a mob, you're normally getting that mob or the special version of that mob. You have a, a chance to get, say, when you click on a chicken, to either get a chicken or the chance to get the clock shroom. After you've collected items for a little while, by the way, you do have unlimited inventory space. You are still stuck with the 64 stack size. So if you 
bring any items into an adventure, which I'll get on later, you can only bring 64 of that item. Or if you put them in your hotbar, you'll only have 64 of that item in your hotbar, but your inventory is unlimited. So once you are finished for a moment of collecting your tappables, you can now build. Building is done through build plates. I mentioned earlier, they come in a variety of sizes. The smallest I've seen is eight by eight and the largest I've seen is 16 by 16. These build plates have two different modes, building mode and playing mode. In building mode, everything is shrunk down to tabletop size. So you can easily move your creation around, move around your build and place stuff on it without sort of staring up into the sky or everything being life-size. This is all miniaturized so you can easily move around and place items to build. The other mode is play mode. This is life size and you can walk around your build as, you know, as it's in full big life block space and experience it. When you are in play mode, which is the life size version, anything you do in that build plate will be reverted back. It'll be rolled back when you stop playing but anything you do in build mode the small miniature version that is that's like you're in your minecraft world where if you blow up tnt you're not getting it back if you blow up an animal and kill it you're not getting it back so everything is static or permanent and persistent just like in normal minecraft when you're in build mode and if you invite a friend remember build mode is the smaller version of the mode they can take your items from you but they can also bring their own items into the build so if you bring in a friend to build mode you gotta really trust them uh you could just you know you know give them a, a, a firm tap on the shoulder uh if they take any of your items that you don't want because the, it is very physical you're going to be standing right next to them but if they happen to have a mob that you don't have they could join your build mode build plate and place that mob down and then you could pick it back up and then you would have it in your inventory so uh the inventories when you join a build plate are not shared you do keep your own inventory and then you can you know place your things down or pick up theirs so if you join a friend's build plate and they have a cool mob you can pick that up and leave real fast and then you have it in your inventory so you do got to trust your friends when uh, you join their build plate in build mode both of these modes can be played locally with your friends you do need to show your friends a qr code and they need to be next to you in order to play around with you there is no like World Wide Web version of co-op. This has to be local co-op only. Next, the other bit of playing that you'll be doing is in adventures. Adventures show up just like tappables do on the map. These tend to be in more public places, so they're normally relegated to parks and a, a place that people are kind of allowed to hang out in for a little while. With adventures, this is where the survival aspect of Minecraft really comes to the fore because you can die and lose your items. Also, adventures are a little bit more exciting and exhilarating because of that fact, but also they're a lot more curated. So this is really stuff that the staff has decided is a good build, is a good experience. So you're going to be going into an experience, not just seeing some random thing. You will enter an adventure and you'll bring inventory with you. If you happen to die in an adventure, then you will lose your inventory. Just like if you die in normal Minecraft, you will also lose your inventory. Adventures are timed, so you kind of have to get in there and get out. Everything that you uh, capture inside of an adventure will go into your inventory. And if you happen to play with a friend, it'll go into their inventory as well. So there is no item sharing it's item duplicating in a way so if you pick up a log your friend will also get the log that you pick up so you don't have to be worried if your friend mines the diamond because you'll end up getting that diamond as well it's a shared inventory that everybody gets at the end of the adventure you never really know what you're going to be walking into this could be a fairly peaceful adventure where you really you're just getting ore and kind of exploring or this could be a more of a mob fight adventure where you're expected to defend yourself and have a sword and be able to kill mobs 
you have unlimited reach so don't worry if you're not standing close to a mob and you only have a sword you can still attack that mob with your sword even if they seem very very far away once again adventures like almost everything in the minecraft earth is multiplayer with the adventure you don't have to share a qr code they just join the adventure with you and they'll also be in that adventure basically when an adventure starts and the countdown timer is going on anybody else can also join along with you there is a crafting and a smelting portion of the game in this mode you are able to turn your raw materials into items that you could normally craft in minecraft this is sort of the i don't know how to describe it it, it takes a long time and you kind of see this in other mobile games where you select something for your character to do and then you'll come back after 30 minutes, an hour, and then that task will be done. Uh, and you can speed that up with rubies, but in general, you'll just be waiting a little while to craft something. I find that this really isn't that big of a hindrance because you tend to not need to craft a whole bunch of stuff. You'll just find it in tappables. Uh, and same thing with smelting. If you know you need to make an iron bar or something like that, it tends to not be that big of a, of a hindrance. Uh, there are multiple slots which you can unlock later on in gameplay. You start off with just one. So I ended up making a few, say, cobblestone fences with my crafting and so i used my raw cobblestone to make fences and all it took was time whenever i want to smelt something up you do need to use fuel and the thing that you're going to smelt so to make to make glass you need sand and you also need some type of fuel you can use logs i'm surprised that you cannot smelt uh charcoal i'm, I'm that at the moment you can't probably that'll be uh maybe when you're watching this you're like you can chad because it's been updated a little bit but at the moment you cannot smelt charcoal and so you have to use something wooden to fuel your smelting i guess i shouldn't say something wooden you can use something flammable <laughs> to fuel your smelting next let's talk about challenges challenges are things that the game gives you tasks to complete and when you complete them you will get a reward At the moment they seem to be mostly experience in rubies but that could change in the future and this is really just like any other mobile game if you do a certain task so many times you'll get a small reward some of them are to click on tappables to build stuff in your build plate really just things to kind of get you to keep playing the game and those will change uh, fairly often so that you can come back day after day and have new challenges and get new experience and that sort of thing. Challenges do come in a few different varieties, daily, weekly, career, and event challenges. So they can be a whole bunch of different types of challenges for you to complete. So that is the general overview of Minecraft Earth. Uh, what do you do next? If you just downloaded Minecraft Earth, what is your next step? It's really to go out into the world, hopefully in a loving and caring place. Uh, be safe, though, uh, out there, really, seriously. And go click on tappables and collect items, collect experience, and collect rupees. And maybe even go on an adventure or two. And then head back home. You can smelt up and craft some things for your builds and play with build plates, play around. Uh, building something and then sharing it with your friends. They do have to be right there next to you and uh, experience Minecraft Earth that way and you know slowly progress through the game.